back up at uh, Sugarloaf today. Uh, this is the kind of day you dream about at this joint. It is like probably 10 to 12 knots, maybe 15 in the puffs. They say gusting 19, but we'll see about that. Um, straight out of the south. There's a high kind of south of Perth. Uh, some sort of low pressure went over Tassie last night. So we've just got this beautiful cold, sort of rainy, yeah, airstream uh, coming up over uh, Melbourne and then up into Sugarloaf. So heaps of boats here because uh, Listerfield Lake got hit by a massive storm the day after I went there last and uh, all the trees got ripped down and it's closed. Got the Listerfield people on here. Uh, I've got the big sail on and uh, yeah, got the big foil on. Since uh, last time I sailed at Sandringham in uh, all those waves and had that huge nose dive, I've done a lot of work to the boat to try and uh, fix up that control system. So I'll show you that now, but basically I've just shortened up the uh, wand sort of permanently and uh, yeah, done a lot of work figuring out where it needs to be. So I think I'm a lot closer now, so I should actually have some control. So last time out, you'll remember that my GPS bracket that I'd uh, 3D printed got absolutely smashed because it kind of slipped down and then the van got hold of it and then it uh, shoved my Nova sail through the side of the foredeck. So I uh, redesigned it, I sort of sliced it uh, in half there near the two sort of lines where it turns to come back aft and uh, increased the angle like a fair bit. And then I angled back the part where the Nova sail bolts uh, so that I could see it a lot better. And then I made that little insert uh, that sort of bolts in so that it actually like clamps onto the mast. Uh, so yeah, rip the other one out and then uh, yeah, put the new one in. That's 11.55 long, um, so I'll write that down, and then I'll just let it off. Full long is 13.15. So the other thing I need to think about is, the guy left a really good comment on my video, and my moth sailing friend said the same thing, so I think he's right. Uh, but I should go, and I should measure the distance from the bottom of my hull, which I know is this line, because it fits perfectly, to the foil. And then, see what that is. So I've got 970. And then at the front of the boat, to the bottom of the hull, let's say it is 350. So I need to be 100 mil up from there. So 950 is 850. This is as long as I want my wand. And then I need to add 850 plus 850 plus 340. Okay, so I need 1190 is my max long, which is a good 200 mil shorter than what I have now. We'll screenshot that so that I can find that later. And then my range of motion slot is 180. So if I set it up to go 900, it'll get me 1080. I'll take a piece out from here and then I'll 3D print a little sleeve to go inside the joint and I'll just take like 150 mil out and uh, then glue it all back together. So to draw that uh, joiner piece on Fusion, I just drew a circle and then extruded it up to about the length I wanted. And because epoxy doesn't stick to plastic very well, I put like a coarse thread around the outside of it. But the uh, thread didn't really print very well because the diameter of the whole thing was like 5mm. 
but at least it sort of put some grooves there for the epoxy to stick to. So while that was printing, I thought I'd better uh, fix up my ride height adjuster. You'll remember a couple of episodes ago I made this one, which had a really aggressive thread, and uh, it spun around all right, but the problem was that uh, it acted like an old school pump uh, with a bit of a thread on it, and it just sort of pushed the Dyneema all the way to one end and then off. So you could really only use it like once, because uh, yeah, then the rope would come off. So I made this one, which uh, had some little ramps at the end, and then just some grooves in the barrel and uh, that seems to work a lot better. So uh, I printed that one up, and then yeah, I just had to uh, snap off the support material uh, sitting out on the footpath, which was a bit cold. But then, uh, yeah, once that came out, now that I've sort of got the setting dry on the printer, it's uh, a lot easier to do that. I was then able to just screw it on and wrap the rope around it, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to say that one works a lot better. So once I'd glued that um, joiner I'd printed in with uh, some 5 minute arrow diet, I was able to just uh, wrap uh, this uh, fibre around it, which is actually basalt fibre, so it's like melted uh, volcanic rock that then they extrude and turn into a cloth. Uh, so it turns out to be, I think, somewhere between like uh, carbon and fibreglass in terms of like mechanical performance uh, and cost. So I ended up with a few off cuts because uh, during lockdown I built myself a little European sailing canoe that I haven't finished yet, but I uh, thought that would be perfect for this job. So then I was able to just uh, wrap some insulation tape around it, uh, like inside out with the sticky side out, which uh, gives a nice surface finish to the part, and I didn't have to stuff around setting up a vacuum bag. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but uh, in that hole is a little screw and that's what's come loose which allows the cam and the axle to not move together. So I'm going to fix that as well and uh, put some Loctite on it and try and get it to all yeah, tighten up again. Now, uh, since I installed this bowsprit, I've obviously got some slop in there too, which wouldn't be helping.
But uh, yeah, let's get out there and have a look. It's a, I think it's a two lap race. I'm in division three, so third start with all the other random fast monos. There's another 59er here as well. So that's at least two we know of in the state now, including my brother's one that's featured in some other videos. So uh, I'll be interested to see how they go. But uh, yeah, let's get out there. Ouch. <laughs> no. Okay, we've got 346 to go. 258. Nice gust. Very short line. On left, way left. Thank <laughs> you. 
There we go.
seen, I just got absolutely smashed. Uh, I don't know what's going wrong with this boat, but I'm just getting sort of no flap response at all. It's sort of impossible to take off, and when it does take off, it just keeps going up. Um, so I'm just going to try and work through it and see if there's anything obvious that's uh, making it impossible to sail. Maybe I can just get out there for 10 minutes just to check everything. So, yeah, I'll just have a look and see what I can find. So as you can see, when I move the cam, my push rod's not moving, so... That indicates there's something wrong somewhere. Like, maybe the ride height's just so far out that it's not pushing the cam onto the follower. Um, Or maybe it's too high. So to go down, I spin this way. Still nothing. So now I'll go up. Just spin this way. nothing. When I do that down here, I must have a problem in the Fordex. Glad I didn't glue that on. So frustrating, like absolutely perfect conditions. And it was like being in a rodeo. Put all this in my life jacket. I don't think the uh, people of Melbourne want tape in their water. So for starters, oh, stupid thing, no wonder it was unsaleable, jeez, okay so maybe these aren't a good idea, maybe I should just try and do what Bugs says. So as you can see Bugs who invented the Bugs cam at the end of my bowsprit uh, suggests just going straight through everything, so uh, yeah I might do that. But uh, yeah that's the end of my day because there's no way that Whatever input I get out of the wand is just getting absorbed up here. So that's okay, at least we uh, found the problem. Like Thomas Edison inventing the light bulb, that's another way to not make moth oil, I suppose. It's a shame I lost the day, but oh well. At least it wasn't Easter or Regatta. So, uh, sorry, this, uh, the sailing component of this video wasn't very good, but I hope you like the crashes. If something's drastically wrong like that, I think I did the right thing sort of identifying it coming in instead of persevering because I was going to break the sail or the rig or something. As disappointing as it is, I'm happy I got in with only uh, a small bit of boat work to do and uh, nothing major. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll uh, see you next time. Now, where's my Dremel?